This episode is about automation. I personally think that automation is one of the coolest things and topics in computers and actually the reason why we should use them appropriately. Because computers are built to be good to do simple things reliably and nowadays really fast. And humans, however, are better at thinking, being creative and solving problems. And, and I think we should um, keep that separation. Because once it gets to artificial intelligence, it kind of gets difficult for computers to do the right things. And in the same way, if people do repetitive and boring tasks, they get bored really easily. So the first thing I would advise you is if you're using a computer and doing something, then at some point, stand back, take a step back and reflect, like, what am I actually doing here? Or what do I want to achieve using a computer? And having that said, you might want to apply the three strikes principle in the same way as you could do in refactoring programs. Um, having that said, if you do a manual step once, that's fine. If you do it twice, then at least you should be warned. And if you do it like have to do it a third time, then you should automate this. And that involves everything that needs more manual step than once, only one. That means having several manual steps you have to do for yourself as a human. And we as developers, actually we are really lucky because we have an advantage over everybody else as we can actually instruct computers how to do things and not just use them. So we should be able to write programs, we should be able to write scripts to, well, program itself like is a way of automating and is a way of telling the computer what to do. And actually that should also involve your daily work, like doing anything, starting applications, um, starting manual processes that could be um, automated as the rules are quite simple um, and doing your day-to-day -day work. Having that said, you could write scripts and automation for almost everything. And I mean everything. There is this nice story of, I think it was a Russian hacker who automated, he was a system administrator and he automated almost everything from um, repeating emails that contain several keywords to making coffee and to minimize the amount of work he has to do manually up to that real, up to where really necessary. So he had more time reading, enjoying things he wanted to do, working, working on stuff he liked to work and pretending he's doing a great job, but actually his computer did all the job and he wrote some um, scripts and wrote them only once. And having that said, you can write scripts, especially when working on the Unix systems for almost everything. So almost everything is reachable via the command line, even your mouse and um, your keyboard itself so you could actually instruct your mouse to do something and this is quite helpful if you have some applications that actually don't offer an API or a command line so you basically could even automate these things by simulating your mouse but just way faster than you could and actually some um, web and GUI testing frameworks do the same things that like they emulate a mouse and then they do as if they are the user and click around and actually that could be automated equally well and this is not supposed to be a f uh, the full tutorial on what you should automate or not because it highly depends on what you're doing but let me show you a, a, a couple of things i found for myself and then um, and then automated for developers work so for example when i have this was another automation by the way i um, showed that in another video shortcut for the command line when i have this is a java e project a project to build that then um, builds the project into a war file and now because I saw it that I always had to somehow um, deploy that war file and actually mostly I don't use the IDE to directly build and deploy you could also do this this is a great um, other example of automation for deployment but I always wanted to do this manually having a clear um, and well-defined state of an application server for example so 
I always wrote scripts in these projects, for example, shell scripts that took the WAR file and put it into the server, started the server, grabbed uh, the log file and, every, and everything you need to do, which actually is way better than at first copying and starting all yourself manually. And then I actually wrote um, a script to include this on the path that is um, more generally applicable, that takes the same thing, um, clears the server's de uh, deployment directory and deploys the whole thing. And how it looks like is, this is just an example, but, but to give you an idea, it assumes several, um, several directories and then looks into for the current directory, the target directory, takes the, the WAR file and, and deploys it. Just one example of what developers probably are doing a lot. And actually I've seen this, that developers are doing this manually and trying to get really fast, but manually all over again on like several times a day, like a lot of times a day, because this should be your, as, as enterprise developer, this will, will be quite a, a job often required to deploy something, right? So you should automate this. Same way for Docker containers, for building anything. So you could actually, the same way is that you should have a small CI server on your system, doing the same thing like a CI server does in a big scale, but actually a good CI server is nothing else than a couple of scripts, right? So it just automates things appropriately. And you can just start it manually, but start it only once and don't involve a lot of manual steps and so on and so forth. So this is one example of my, of my automation. Another one is um, when I'm recording videos like this or I'm speaking on conferences, I have a slightly different setup for my whole computer that involves different font sizes, font sizes in the command line as well as in the IDE. I reset the IDE to be not a dark but a light color because that um, um, comes better for, the, um, for reading it on a projector. And the same is true for the command line. So I don't use this uh, white on black, but um, black on white um, font size. So of course I could reset that all the time, but actually I wrote um, just this, a script for this called well, presentation mode. And then it enables a couple of things I wrote I actually put the IntelliJ directory under version control and then applied some patches that actually do all the configuration changes required to reset these settings. Of course, this requires a little bit of, um, of re refactoring and, and no, of re-engineering, but once you've done it and, and it kind of works, then you're really happy because you sell yourself a lot of time. And yeah, this is actually true true for many things. Like the thing you have to think about is, of course, it requires some overhead to write this automation. And for scripts, it's simple. For something like GUI automation, it's more work to do. But just calculate how often you will do this effectively. And then you will see that the benefit, um, you can acquire the benefit quite, quite fast. So you will and benefit from this really, really soon. And also, it's it's not just about the time, but really the energy you as a human apply to this, because you want to spend your time like thinking, solving problems, being creative, because I think this is something more enjoyable than just doing stupid repetitive tasks like a monkey, right? So especially as developers, we have the advantage that we, that we can use all this technology, so we should do so. The same is true for computer installation. And this is actually something um, really seen really often. It's also also true for, for my own setup up to some extent. But um, while well, we always talked taught in the DevOps uh, initiative that we should not snowflake our servers. And in the same way, sh we should not snowflake our local machines too much. For example, if your laptop breaks down tomorrow, how long does it take you to take a new one off the shelf and get up and running and being productive again? Ideally, this takes 15 minutes because it takes quite a time to install the operating system. But that should be it, ideally. Um, 
Having that set on Linux or Unix systems, it's, it's quite simple because you can basically apply a lot of um, Unix commands and put them together in a shell script and then it works. Well, of course, it doesn't always work because there are things like you download stuff and then the download breaks and, and everything. But just, for example, documenting all, all the steps is really helpful. Like when you sit, uh, set up a system, then it's a no-brainer to just document everything you're doing into a small text file. So in the next time, even if you have to do it manually, that at least you can follow the script. And then, then it's also not a big deal to take all these ideally commands on the Unix side, then it's really simple, and put them into a script for computer installation. And a similar thing, I, for example, did this for dot .files. As dot .files contain a lot of the configuration, especially for your home, um, home directory. And, of course, these dot .files should ideally be somehow version controlled or at least uh, saved. And let me show you the the git um, repository that contains basically all of the important uh, things and what I'm doing I put these all in the git repository and then I wrote a small uh, shell script that goes over this um, repository recursively and just applies some links so what I'm doing I have this everything in the end on the version control and then it's just symlink from the home directory or home plus some subdirectory or wh wherever you need it or etc somewhere else and then you just apply a script that generates uh, the symlinks and even then if you change it later in your version control and you uh, push it to version control you could even pull it to another computer and it's updated automatically and it's saved and if you buy a new computer, you just uh, pull the repository, trigger the, um, the shell script, and then you're done. Another thing is you should do push notifications instead of pull, where appropriate. This highly depends what you're doing, but for example, this is the same way SCI server works, right? Um, it, it should query the version control system and then build the project appropriately if there are some changes. You should not trig have to trigger the CI server and have to ping it all the time you want to have a build, right? And the same is true, for example, if you're if you're writing something like writing text that gets published into um, a website, for example, you're using a lightweight markup language and then you have a, um, a parser and put it into another um, format like HTML or PDF, you could do this automatically, for example, by file watchers like iNotifyD on the Linux side and there are other examples for other systems. But just as I say, try to think what, what you're doing and try to eliminate all uh, the steps. So like this example for, for writing could be if you write something in plain text, then you apply, for example, ASCII doctor to put it to HTML or PDF. Then at first you apply all the steps manually. This is not that good, right? Because you write and you're in the uh, flow in the way of thinking in the way of writing and then you have to do a context switch after you saved apply all the steps and look at the result the better way is to automate this so you write save trigger the automation script look at the result and even better it is to do something like a push notification in this case a file watcher you write you save and you immediately have the output that's, that's the best way and that enables you to minimize this overhead and maximize the way, the flow, the way of focusing what you actually wanted to do because you want to create that output, right? Or you're paid to create the output to do some work and you're not paid to uh, trigger stupid scripts because there is no benefit. Nobody benefits from, the, from doing so. And the same is true if you have any kind of templates. For all kinds of applications, even for, for writing, for writing emails, you of course you should template your signature or you should template several signatures um, where appropriate. So if you're using several greetings, for example, this is what I just uh, recently automated this using a, um, a small extension for Thunderbird and so on and so forth. So think of all the, the steps you are doing that require no active thinking, that where well, you're just acting like a machine, acting like a monkey and try to automate this um, 
as much as possible. And as I said, this is not a tutorial on how to automate, but rather than of what you could do, maybe to, to get some inspiration, what you could achieve, read an article on that uh, Russian hacker. That's actually a really funny story that should also inspire you to become an automation hacker. Thanks for watching.